Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reader from TheBiblicalNutritionist.com and today I'm going to share with you what I'm doing to stretch my food budget, save money, and yet still have satisfying meals on the table. I have over 26 tips that I'm going to share with you that I just automatically do. It's just how I've been raised, what I've been taught through the years, and I realize you may not know all of the tips that I have, so I believe that you're going to learn some new tips today that you can start applying. And when we apply these tips to the health of our family, to our food budget, it just brings a calmness into our life. So before we get started, I just wanna say thank you for letting me share with you God's recipe for excellent health. And that includes three things. I get to share with you how to be confident in the kitchen, which is what we're doing today, confident in your health, both physically and spiritually, and most importantly, understanding how much God loves you and desires to have a personal relationship with you. So that's why I'm here. You are the reason I'm here. So let's get started. So let me start with number one, no waste buying. Now we, we all know the big box stores. We've got the Sam's, the Costco, the BJ's, and there's many others that might be in your area. Yet we tend, people tend in general to buy more than they need or they buy the great big options. And this, this is in our house and it is my husband's favorite cracker or pretzel. It's his snack food, um, it's his, so I'm just gonna talk about it. When you buy bigger quantities like this versus the smaller size, it has been proven in many different studies how bigger purchases like this lend to greater eating. So in other words, if you buy a package that's 60% more, people tend to eat at least 10 to 20% more per serving. So we need to make sure we're watching for no waste buying. If you're going to buy the large packages, then when you eat a serving, it needs to be measured out in a bowl. And this is very important. Otherwise, the value that you got over the large package is lost because people eat more. And it's been so proven by the size of our bowls, the size of our plates, the size of the package, all contribute to eating more than we need. And when food is getting more expensive and harder to come by, we need to learn to recognize where, where are the leakages in our, in our uh, plan that we have for our family. So be careful, so no waste buying. If you buy something, make sure you're gonna consume all of it. Make sure you can seal it up nice and tight to save what you're not eating right now and then, then use it for another time and be sure and portion out your servings for these packages. Otherwise, you're just encouraging over eating and wasteful spending. All of that was just tip number one. Tip number two is to shop on Mondays and Wednesdays. Now this may vary with your store, but typically Monday is the markdown day because Monday is the day what's left over from the weekend rush. The weekend rush is always Sometimes they will offer big sales on Saturday because they want you to come to their store versus another store. But after the weekend is over, that's when produce gets marked down because it didn't get sold over the weekend, they need to move it, and other items that need to be clearanced out. So watch your store. Go through the store and find all of the clearance items. So Mondays and Wednesdays are your best days. Now Wednesday can be a good day because it's a pre-stock day. We're bringing in the new produce, we're bringing in the new products for the weekend rush. So Wednesday can be a cleaning out day. And if you just learn your own store, you're gonna recognize these trends. All right, number three, I'm gonna kinda go back to number one and what I've titled this is Bulk Wisely. So I kind of touched on it already. If you're going to buy in bulk, then do it very wisely. Buy the items that your family is going to eat and buy what they need to eat, okay? So when we bulk wisely, we are buying things in quantity, in larger quantities than we would eat for the week. And then make sure you know how to can. This <laughs> is pink, sort of, and this is meat that I've canned. I got a good deal on it, so I bought many extra packages, and then I canned the meat. And I have a video about how to can meat, so go check that out. Or there was a large surplus of squash, so I turned it into a squash relish. Then you can also 
and dehydrate. Where did I put? Okay, right here. So strawberries were actually in abundance in my garden, so I dehydrated them. So if you find organic strawberries on sale, buy as many as you can and then dehydrate what you can. So this is the perfect go-to if we go hiking. It's good for that. It's good for energy. It can be taken in a lunch if someone's still taking a lunch to school or to work, or it can be at, served at a lunch or a dinner at your home. So dehydrate, can and even learn how to freeze foods. So that's that tip. All right, number four is to eat out less. Eating out costs more, even though groceries have gone up in expense, it's still higher price to eat out. And I'm not talking about those 99 cent meals that some restaurants are offering and those are even going away. I'm talking about just eating out in general. So eating out is always gonna cost more than eating at home. And so be sure and watch my videos. Make sure you're logged into and signed up for these videos and you click the bell so you get notified because I'll be sharing a lot more videos on how to stretch our meals, how to make them go further. We always wanna keep though the one word which is satisfied. We're not just watering down things, we are increasing the nutritional value and increasing our making our budget stretch so be sure we learned that we need to eat out less next is we eat we need to eat 20 percent less it has been proven and it's proven everywhere you go you see the proof around you because we have an obesity epidemic in america and in many other countries who tend to follow the american trend well, America's obese and other countries are obese. In fact, it's going up to 40% in the next couple years of Americans that are obese. Now there's a lot of contributing factors to that. We're not gonna go into that today. But what I do want you to recognize is we can all eat 20% less and be satisfied. So I'm not talking about eat 20% less and then you're like, oh, but I'm still starving. Now, some of that we're gonna to get to a little bit later how to recognize that. But eating 20% less is extremely good for your food budget. So I have here a typical plate, and then I have what we would typically call the salad plate. The salad plate is plenty big enough for your meal. I know I've lost several of you already. So eating 20% less. To start eating 20% less, I would say no more seconds, no more thirds. What you take on the first serving is what you eat. That's where we start eating 20% less. So no more seconds, no more thirds, no matter how good it is. And then once you have mastered no more seconds or thirds, then reduce the size of your plate. What you're gonna learn over a period of time is how you are satisfied with less. Your body feels better, you can think better. You're actually losing some weight and you like the new you. So eat 20% less. Another way to eat 20% less is to learn how to use a food scale. Now you wouldn't have to do this continually forever, but sometimes just to get an idea of how much food you're eating, especially when it comes to protein, and proteins are definitely going up in price as well, especially meat proteins. So if you're eating meat, you wanna eat four ounces if you are a woman and six ounces if you are a man. No more, you don't need any more than that. Now I brought out some tuna. So this one can of tuna says it's a single serving. So yes, this actually the ounces on the tuna are not gonna be really accurate because it's included the liquid inside it. So it says five ounces. So in this five ounces, you would probably get about four ounces of meat. So this would be a perfect serving size for a woman. A man could be satisfied with this or they can add you know, a little bit more from a second can. So, Think about that. So learn to weigh your meats and learn to weigh all your proteins. You can also weigh your vegetables, but there's really no limit on how many vegetables you can eat a day, but definitely your meats. Learn to recognize what is four ounces and what is six ounces. And that's going to help you greatly to see, oh, wow, I've been eating six and a half ounces every day and I just thought that was okay. No, we don't need that much in, a, in one meal. All right, so that's that one. All right, number seven is to grow your own. So growing your own is just, yes, we, we know that, we know to do that, but how do we do that? Well, I have several videos on that, but I just wanna point this out. 
So this is how to grow your own microgreens. And I don't have a batch started right now. But just if you say, Annette, I don't have a garden, I don't have a yard, that's no excuse. You have a windowsill or you could grow microgreens. Microgreens have almost a 50%, sometimes more, nutritional value in the same size serving as fresh vegetables. So if you don't have a garden, no more excuses. You can get different seeds, you can get broccoli seeds, alfalfa seeds, so many different seeds that you can sprout and then you can just keep it going and adding sprouts to a hamburger, that's your salad, adding sprouts to oatmeal, <laughs> you could do that. That would be your vegetables or on top of rice or on top of quinoa or on top of beans. You have a salad and you're growing it yourself and you're saving yourself a lot of money. Now these seeds, you, you wanna definitely um, get organic seeds. Now you can also, I'll put a link to this microgreen sprout grower down below so you can catch this but you can stock the seeds and get them now while they're in stock and just store them in a i store them in a like a, a metal can we used to call them coffee cans i don't drink coffee but i still use those metal cans that way the seeds stay nice and dry and away from moisture away from heat and away from away from light and i can save those seeds for years to come so you can actually satisfy the microbiome in your gut by growing your own microgreens or your own sprouts so now if you're new to sprouts and be sure you're subscribed down below because i'm going to be doing a video to teach you even more about sprouts if you're new to sprouts it's kind of a an adjustment for your gut so beware of that but your gut will adjust just stick with it don't give up and you can do this all right number eight is to be ready to discover farmers in your area so there are many times that I will drive down the road and I'll see someone who has a garden outside. Well, one time I went to the farmer's market and I just wanted to see what all the farmers were bringing in and how they were harvesting it and what they were growing. I just love farmer's markets. Well, this one farmer, he just bragged and bragged and bragged about how much food he had to throw away because he was growing so much on his organic fields that he just couldn't keep up with it all. Okay, well, my ears perked up when he said throwing away because that's where I come in. And so I said, can I come and visit your farm? He says, oh, sure. So we made a, a, an appointment for me to go visit his farm. He only has two acres, only two acres. And so with, on the day that I was visiting his farm, I drove by, you know, it was down a really long drive and back roads and everything. And I passed a few yards that had gardens in it. And I thought, oh, how, how neat is that, that they're growing their own vegetables. Well, one yard had just an abundance of tomatoes. They were just, the whole vine was just like laying over from the pain of hang, holding onto those tomatoes. And I thought, you know, I'm going to stop by there on my way back. So I go to the farmer's garden, his, his crop and everything is like, he was not kidding. He was literally throwing away, you know, big containers of vegetables because he had no one to give it to. The, the feed my people didn't want it. The people for the free food didn't want to come and get it. And he wasn't that far out. It's just whatever. So I said, you know, I will take everything you have here. You're going to throw it away anyway. I'm going to take it home. I'm going to dehydrate and bring half back. And then you can start selling that at the farmer's market. Well, he just got excited. He just started loading up my Explorer with these big bushels of food. Well, I was almost filled. And so then on the way home, I stopped by that farm, that yard with a garden in it. And I went up to the door and I knocked and, I, and they answered. And I says, uh, ma'am, looks like you have a lot of tomatoes on your vines. Would you like me to pick them for you and bring them in for you in case you're having trouble picking? And she says, girl, I've been doing so much canning. I am sick of canning. I don't want to see another tomato. You go out there and you pick them and you take them home for yourself. All right. So I went out to her garden and I started, I had to go to my car and find all the bags that I could find and bring them out. And I just started filling them with tomatoes. Well, while I was doing that, her husband came around the corner with a bushel of cucumbers. He says, we're tired of cucumbers too. You can take these. And so I'm still picking tomatoes. I'm putting the cucumbers in the car. He comes around the corner again with another bushel of peppers. He's like, we've had enough peppers too. This is a story that can repeat itself every day. If we start our day with today's going to be an amen day, I heartily agree with what God brings my way. And that's how I try to teach everyone in our coaching group to start your day. Recognize God knows what you need and he's there to provide for you. And he did. I had to call more people to say, hey, would you like some free food? And so I spent all summer dehydrating and giving back to that farmer every two weeks, a carload of food. It was amazing. I still have food in my stock that I dehydrated from that one summer. 
I'm telling you, the farmers are out there. And as you do this, you're building a relationship. You're not only working and bartering, and, and sometimes I, I help that farmer. I go out and work on his farm and then and for payment of food. And I'm willing to do that because I'm building a relationship with him. He's kind of stepped away from the Lord and I'm trying to share with him what he's missing and why he needs to come back. It's all about the relationship. All right, so I told you about that one. Let's see what else we have. So that was number eight, be ready to discover farmers in your area with an abundance. Be willing to work for the food and blossom a friendship. Number nine, learn to make the staples. You can make your own salsa, barbecue sauce, and spaghetti sauce. It's, I have those recipes in my cookbook, the Healthy Treasures cookbook. Just the other day, my husband wanted barbecue sauce on his chicken, and I'm thinking, well, I didn't buy any barbecue sauce. So I just grabbed the organic ketchup, I grabbed the Worcestershire sauce, I grabbed the other ingredients that you need to make barbecue sauce, and in just a few minutes, I had my own barbecue sauce. And I didn't have to pay to three to four dollars for organic barbecue sauce. I paid pennies. So the more you learn how to make your own sauces, the better prepared you're gonna be. So just always have the staples stocked up and you can always take care of your family. All right, next is no more snacking. Yeah, <laughs> this is a, <laughs> this is kind of funny. The title of this bag is Snack Factory. Yeah, we don't need to do snacking. Our body, our brain, and our microbiome would say thank you if we stop snacking between meals. Snacking is just a way to satisfy an emotion. It's just a habit, and those habits are expensive. So if you wanna stop your food budget from being too big and too expensive, then stop snacking. We teach you to do that anyway, so I'm just kind of reiterating what we've been teaching you. Okay, next is make your own milk. So making your own milk, when you see any kind of nut, especially if it's on sale, so it could be cashews, pecans, walnuts, hazelnuts, it could be, um, what am I, almonds, any of those nuts, sunflower seeds, can be turned into a milk. One cup of nuts or seeds and three cups of water and you can make your own milk. When you have those nuts and they're stored in the freezer to keep them nice and safe and to keep them protected from becoming rancid, you can make your own milk anytime you need. I just soak it overnight, blend it in the morning, voila, I have milk. And it's much less expensive than the quality milks that are in the store. So check out my video on how to find a good almond milk. And you'll be surprised, the ingredients in the cheap almond milks, it's, you've got a lot of fillers and very little almonds. Okay, so make your own milk. Number um, 12 is to make your own smoothies with water. Now, my husband loves his juice. We're not going to talk about that. And I used to always use my nut milk for my base. I've switched over to using water as my base for my smoothies. I'm saving money. I didn't really need the extra calories anyway. Sometimes my nut milk added a protein, but I, did, I had plenty of protein in it anyway. So use water as your base for your smoothies. All right, number 13, fast. Fast one meal per week. When you look at your budget, your food budget, and you divide it by the number of meals, so that would be seven times three is 21, not counting snacks, because we got rid of snacks. And then what would it take if you divide your budget by 21? How much money would you save if the entire family fasted one meal a week? Now fasting does not mean you skip breakfast and then you eat a donut at 10. Fasting means no breakfast and then you wait till lunch. So I'd be anxious to see how you do with that. If you can, fast two meals a week, and then you're saving twice that amount of money. So once you start seeing the dollars on the paper, it's just so much easier to start recognizing how you're going to actually save money, and you're not gonna be caught up in the snack factory. All right, next we have know your store. So going back to the grocery store, the more you understand your store and the trends that they have, when are they stocking? When are they pulling out? It used to be I could talk to the different stock people because they were the same people that had worked there for years. Today we have such a turnover and such a shortage, it's harder to get to know people. But if I can get to know the produce person, I wanna know when they're pulling things out. Used to be years ago, they would give me what they're taking out and throwing away. Today they're like, oh, we can't do that legally. Like, okay, well, I still wanna know when, when the trends are. When do they stock? When are they changing their sales? Because that's gonna tell me when prices are going to change. So be aware of that, know your store and shop wisely. Every store in my area, and we have, I think seven or eight different, different brands of stores. Anything from Aldi to Wegmans to Trader Joe's to Whole Foods to Kroger to Food Lion. Yeah, we have a lot of different stores. Oh, Lidl, there's a Lidl too. 
What you want to know is where are their clearance items? Every store has started a clearance section. You want to check that out every time you go by because you never know what's going to be put there. This past week I was getting ready for Shavuot so I needed some egg noodles. I wanted organic and they didn't have any organic egg noodles. So I was going to buy the egg noodles that they had. And I was disappointed because I was thinking back in time when egg noodles used to be 89 cents a bag. I know that really takes us back. <clears throat> and I said, Lord, these used to be 89 cents a bag. And now I'm going to have to pay $2.79 for a bag of egg noodles. And I just thought that was outrageous. So as I was going through the store on the very last aisle, came around the corner and there was their clearance section. They had egg noodles, the same exact package I had in my cart for 79 cents on clearance. I could not discover why they were on clearance. They were exact product that I was going to pay $2.79 for. They were marked down to 79 cents. And besides being like super excited in the grocery store, I was like, Lord, you, you knew my wishes and you already had these marked down before I even got here. And you brought me to this store, which is not my normal store to get them. And so you can see God's handiwork in everything. Number 15, get rid of addictions. Addictions are costing you money. So if you have a sugar addiction, if you have a fast food addiction, if you have a junk food addiction, get rid of it now because it's just going to zap your food budget and it's going to cost you a fortune and we don't have time for addictions. All right. So make sure you're using the hunger satisfied journal because it's going to help you identify the addictions and recognize what they're doing to you. All right. Number uh, 16 is write a plan. Plan your menu, but then be willing to change your plan. So I'm, I'm not trying to contradict myself, but if you have a plan, you're less likely to overspend and to impulse buy. Impulse buys are expensive. So have a plan and then if something's on sale that wasn't on your plan, be willing to, to swap out for your plan. Prayer. I don't know why prayer is all the way down at 17. It should be number one. It should, well, actually, it should be number one, number two. It should be every one of them. But prayer, pray expecting, like I just shared with you on the egg noodles and the farmer, pray expecting God to answer. He wants to give you the desires of your heart because when our heart is in tune with what he wants for us and the mission he has in front of us, he's going to help satisfy those needs. So pray expectantly. Lord, I, you know, I told him in the aisle, as I was speaking to him in the aisle, like, Lord, I remember when these were 89 cents, how I wish they were today. And then I go around the corner and they're 79 cents. So uh, always pray expecting. Number 18 is be willing to trade for food. I have a friend, Julie, she discovered real salt in a very large quantity. It's like, that's a lot of salt. So she's got enough salt that she could trade. There's gonna be other people who need salt, so she has tr a trade going on. Uh, so she could trade a pound of salt for a pound of something that someone else might have. So be willing to trade for food. I have some foods that I'm way overstocked on. Egg noodles would be one of those. I may have to trade egg noodles for something else, but just be willing to trade for food. And then number 19, is this is another important one that like should have been at the top of the list. These aren't in uh, order of what's most important. <laughs> you can see that because I just told you about prayer. This one is really something I want you to hear me. I, one of my greatest mentors, she taught me so much. She taught me how to be a mom and she taught me how to follow the Lord because I, got call, I was called by God specifically into missions at the age of 15. Yet it wasn't until my children were fully grown and on their own before I stepped into the mission field to the degree that I'm doing today. I've done missions my entire life, but not to this degree. You are my mission field right now. And she is the one who told me, she says, Annette, those who depended on God and trusted God weren't in the bread line during the depression. That has stuck with me all of these years. And she, that was probably over 30 years ago that she told me those words. Those who trusted God, trust God, not the government. The government has strings attached to everything they give you. It looks like freebies. There's no such thing. The, the only free thing that we have today is the free gift of salvation. That is the only free thing we have. God wants us to trust him. He, he, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He can sell a cow and feed your family. I'm just telling you, you just need to recognize that. Go to God first and last and not the government. The government is, is their handouts come with strings and we don't need to be tied up in those strings. Number 20, no paper products. So when we travel and if we do eat out and they have, you know, forks and knives and napkins, we will collect them and if we use them, 
great and then we'll throw them away but if we don't then we're going to save them for another time but for us to be buying plastic and paper that's expensive i went to sam's and i was going to buy a stack of paper plates i'm not paying twenty dollars for a stack of paper plates and it wasn't even like it used to be years ago where you'd get 500 plates for 10 bucks it's not that anymore so that is a waste of money it's a consumable you're throwing it away we got to get back to using real now you can use plastic you don't have to use glass especially if you're traveling and things like that but go back to real plates real I, we use cloth napkins i have them right down here in my drawer we use cloth napkins no paper napkins and we save money on paper supplies so realize that is going to save you a lot of money next is your ziploc bags now my parents they should have just been named mr and mrs frugal because they did everything as if they lived in the depression and so we always had to reuse our ziploc bags so yes we would use them and then when we were done we would wash them always wash them inside out make sure they're perfectly dry then flip them back around and then put them in your storage now if i had meat i'm not going to rewash it and sometimes when i have frozen fruit in the freezer it the frozenness will poke holes so then it's pretty much no good um, but if it's still good, we're going to wash it and we're going to put it in our storage and we're going to use it again. That's going to save you a lot of money also. Now, how many of, give me a comment down below. How many of these tips are you already doing and how many of these tips are new? So I look forward to reading your comments. All right, 22, a good protein powder. So we talked about protein in the tuna. We talked about weighing out your protein even a good protein powder is a good meal so this two scoops is going to give me 17 grams of protein this is in place of meat at my dinner or at my lunch or whenever i choose to make this into my meal now there's a couple things one is this i can stock up on and it can stay in storage for a long time so that's a good food to stock up on two by offering it to you i get to offer you a coupon code down below for ten dollars to save money on this that's a really good deal Yet, you can do the same thing. You can sign up to be a wellness partner, and then you could have a coupon to share with your friends. When you do that, you actually make money, and then you can pay for your products. So this is a way of getting your protein in your meals for free. I highly recommend it, and I love doing it. I love helping people all of the time to feed their family well, and doing a second income to do that, there's nothing wrong with that, and this is a really good company that I love. Next is squash. Squash, when you find them in the fall at the grocery store, at your farmer's market, you can stock up. You can have 20 of these and just store it in a cool, dry place. And they will store all winter long. Cutting these up or just baking it, just cut the top off and bake it. You can stuff it with some rice and some quinoa, or you can add a little bit of meat to it. That's a complete meal. Yet these store well. Growing these is an even better idea. Growing these and then storing them, you could satisfy your family and cut your budget almost in half if you had about two of these per week. So that's how I count my storage items. If I wanted to serve two of these per week, then I'm gonna need to serve it over the winter months. So you figure about 25 weeks. So I'm gonna need at least 25 weeks, I'm gonna need at least 50 of these. So it might be a butternut squash, it might be acorn squash, it could be a spaghetti squash. So if I had 50 of these in my storage, I would have enough to satisfy my family with an incredibly delicious. So either grow these or find them in the fall, help a farmer to harvest his own, whatever it takes, the squash is a great meal stretcher. Okay, then back to growing your own. When you have potatoes that you buy in a bag in the store, and if you're buying organic potatoes, they tend to sprout. Cut those sprouts off, those are called slips, and plant them either in a bucket or in your garden or in a flower pot, and you will grow your own potatoes. You can do the same with garlic. So look at that. When they start growing the green, then you can plant that. With this next tip, I just have to add it because I titled it, Enjoy the Chocolate. When, you, when I say enjoy the chocolate, we're looking for a dark chocolate, 70% or more, and it only takes a little tiny half ounce to ounce per day. So no big chocolate bar for the day, just one little ounce. Save it, savor it, enjoy it. And so you have that blissful effect, but you're not spending a lot of money because you're only doing one half to one ounce per day. So enjoy the chocolate, but yet spread it out. Okay, then 
Number 26 is to stretch meals with rice, beans, whatever you find at the store. When you find beans, and these, this says non-GMO, they really aren't a GMO crop anyway. They do not say organic, they do say triple cleaned. So stocking up on these, these store really well. These will store for years if you keep them in a cool, dry, no sun, no heat, no moisture place. Cooking these in overnight, that way it's not gonna take any time during your day, just put them in the crock pot or if you got an instant pot. And then adding one cup per meal of four people, you are stretching your budget. So whether it's beans, lentils, rice, legumes, those are budget stretchers. So stock up on these as much as possible and you will totally see your food budget go further than you expected. Back on the clearance items, these are some of the items I picked up, you know, organic peas for 79 cents. I picked up some cinnamon. This is an organic cinnamon. It's the Saigon cinnamon, which is similar to the Ceylon cinnamon, which I showed you on that video. I'll give you a link to that. $4 for this. Really good price, really good um, buy. On those clearance aisles, this is some um, organic amber agave. I got it for $3, a little bit high, but still much cheaper, more than half price than what they would sell for on the shelf. So be watching your clearance items all of the time. Never go to the store without swinging by the clearance aisle. You never know what's going to be there, and I guarantee you that. And every store, if you hit Kroger, all Kroger's are different. So be watching for that. And next is God provides. God is our Jehovah Jireh. He is the Lord who provides. That phrase was started with Abraham and Isaac on the mountain. It was continued in many other stories. God provided for his prophets and fed them. He provided for the widow and her son. He provided for Ruth. Ruth went through a famine and ended up in the heritage of Jesus Christ. There is so much, there is so many um, accounts, biblical accounts in scripture where God provides for his own. Taking the Israelites into the promised land, he said, hey, I've already planted the orchards. I've already planted the trees. The harvest is ready to be harvested. You got the wheat, the barley, the pomegranates, the dates, the olives, the fig trees. They're all waiting for you. God provides. But as I said before, he wants us to focus on him and not the government. Focus on God. Stay in his word. And every time you read a biblical account of how God provides, share it with your family and your friends. We all need the reminders of how God provides. This is just so important. And then there's a couple other things. One is the Hunger Satisfied Journal. I give this away free as a download in the seven steps to amazing biblical health. Go there and download it. We need to recognize food sensitivities and food addictions and also hunger and satisfied. The sooner we learn hunger and satisfied, the easier it's gonna be to eat 20% less, to fast a meal. This is all gonna come into practice and application when you have the Hunger Satisfied Journal. Another area where you can get this is the 40 day transformation. I give it to you there as well. And if you haven't already picked it up there, then you can pick it up on our website. We have it for sale at, on the lowest price possible on our website. So go check it out there. As you record what God is doing in your life, you're going to see a transformation that you have been praying for and dreaming about, and you're going to see it come to fruition. So hunger satisfied journal. Uh, that is pretty much everything I see that I, um, I talked about working with your friends and farmers. A friend of mine, she, I said, hey, I need some green bean seeds. I forgot to buy green bean seeds. So she brought me over this one pound package for me to take out what I needed. And I'll just give her back her bag with what I didn't use. I've shared my seeds with her. This is how we stretch a budget. This is how we stay true to what God is calling us to. He wants us to stay strong and stay healthy and be on mission. And so we need to learn these tips to apply to our everyday shopping, our everyday cooking, and just our everyday relationships. So I hope you have found at least three tips today that you didn't know already that it's gonna help stretch your budget, help you recognize God is our provider, and just to keep us focused. I am a net reader, the biblical nutritionist. I'm not just the biblical nutritionist, I'm your biblical nutritionist. You are the reason I'm here. I so desire to see you finish this race well. We read about that in Hebrews, that we are to finish this race and finish it well. And we do it by recognizing our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and we wanna care for this body, and we want to be strong for the Lord, both in our words, 
and in our wisdom and in our choices. So thank you for letting me share this with you. Please put in the comments down below of all of these that I've given you. I've actually given you more than I had on my list. So we're probably at about 27, 28 different tips. Maybe we even hit 30, I'm not sure. But tell me below, how many of these tips are you gonna start applying today? And how many have you already done in the past? Thanks for watching and remember, most of all, God loves you.